we have a, an option here in live meeting uh, under Q&A. You can ask, ask questions, and we'll uh, get to those uh, at the end. Let's see this next slide. We are using live meeting audio, so if you're, if you're not hearing me, then at least you're reading the slide. And no, you're not getting audio. Um, uh, we're going to have answers at the end, like I said. Um, we'll try to get to all of them, but we have limited time. So if we need to field some of those questions after the, the webinar via email or individually, then we may um, have to do that. Um, Marcy's on the, on the meeting with me, so um, she's going to assist me. And she's going to have uh, that special offer at the end that we always um, have in these webinars. So let's get started. Um, one big challenge that we see with InfoPath browser forms is that user roles are not available. If you start a, if you start a, a, the InfoPath designer and you launch a new form, a new browser form, you're going to see that the user roles option is disabled. Just you can't use it. Um, and there are some workarounds if you do some. Some searching on the internet, you're going to find that Microsoft itself has documented a workaround using a secondary XML file, and there's the link there in the slide if you want to read about that. It's from 2007, but you know, um, still relevant. Um, Clayton Cobb, he's a Kidabra partner. He's a Microsoft MVP. He frequently posts on our infopathdev.com forums. He has a, a lot of blogs, and, and one of the two of the topic, two of his blogs deal with this uh, this issue. Um, he has uh, used, uh, he has simulated user roles, user groups in browser-enabled forms, using contacts lists imported from Outlook, using Active Directory. I think he used a um, an Active Directory, like his own his own web service, his own code. Um, so those links are there for your reference. If you want to take a look after the call, those are just some methods that are out there. Um, what we're going to demo today is um, you know, we have uh, Qdabra DBXL, and we have the Active Directory web service. And that can be used to simulate InfoPath user roles as well. It's, um, of course, it requires uh, either DBXL or the Active Directory standalone. But the technique is similar to um, the techniques and these other links, it's just, you know, where do you get your data from? Do you get it from a secondary XML file? Do you get it from a contacts list? Or do you get it from Active Directory? That's really the, the only difference is your data connection. Um, what are the benefits? Well, with if you have any user roles, whether it's InfoPath user roles or the simulated user role, you can you can use um, form load rules to control what view that the user sees. So you can have a view for different uh, user groups, different users, uh, individual users even. Um, you can hide or disable individual controls. This is just InfoPath uh, conditional formatting. You can control submit options based on the user role, because you can have uh, different submit buttons for different uh, user groups, user roles. Um, because you are hiding and disabling controls, you're making the form easier to fill out for the users. They're not going to need to look at uh, controls that they don't need to look at. You know, you can hide those controls. You can make the form more streamlined, easier to use. And uh, like the next bullet says, you're just hiding those from you. You're making life easier on the user. Um, and uh, you can have also validation rules that can be um, implemented per per user group, right? Um, so all of the options that are in InfoPath, you know, uh, rules, conditional formatting, validation, all of those become available um, on a per group or a per user basis. Um, so it really gives you a lot of flexibility when dealing with different types of users um, in your form. So let's get to the demo. I'm going to share out here. Hopefully, it comes up. I'm first just going to show you the form itself in design mode. And maybe what I should do is, um, maybe the first thing I should do is design a blank form. 
browser form and just show you here are the user roles and it says user roles can only be used in forms designed to be filled out in the info path failure so they're not available for your browser form so this is my sample form it has two views I have a default view and I have a view for the sales department so it's just very simple uh, this is a view for people whose department is sales and this is the main view for anyone not in the sales department where is the sales department coming from you may be asking yourself well it's coming from Active Directory I'm going to switch to a, a remote desktop connection here hopefully it loads and you can see that I'm I'm controlling Marcy's profile right now and I changed her department to sales so these are just Active Directory properties. If you have, uh, if you have uh, an Active Directory, pro another, a different Active Directory property that you want to use for this, you can. If you want to base it on Manager, you can do that. You can control this uh, through Manager. In this example, we're going with the property called Department. Um, but as long as it's an Active Directory, as long as it's a property in Active Directory, you can use that to um, for this example and we have a document with steps that we can send you after the call and um, and it's clear in that document it, we explain that you can use any Active Directory property um, so what does this form do well if we go to the unload rules there are two rules the first rule is gonna uh, query for the users department and um, the Active Directory query is already has already happened. It's here in our data connections. It happens every time the form is opened. Um, for those of you familiar with the Qdabra web service, this is just a typical AD user info connection to get my info. It's pretty straightforward. There's nothing um, too difficult here. And we're just getting the key uh, the key for department. And like I said, if you wanted to use a different key, you just filter here and use a different key. You could use manager, you could use uh, zip code if you want it. Um, all the properties are there, so it's just a matter of extracting it. And then our second rule just switches view. So we switch view if our, um, if our department is sales. And one thing you'll notice is that my department um, node is in, our, is in my main data source. Um, it is probably uh, it's probably recommended. I mean, we could argue about this. It's probably recommended that you could that you could put this into a secondary um, data source, just something called form logic, and just hide it away from the users. You don't keep it in the main data source. But that's just a minor design issue. It's not going to prevent us from um, proceeding with the demo. So that's the first form. Um, if I go to if I have already published this form out to um, one of our SharePoint servers and this is the SharePoint this is the SharePoint form library if I click add document it's gonna tell me this is the main view for anyone not in the sales department and I think Marcy is clicking that same link right now and she'll be able to show to share out and show us that because she is in the sales department she's going to get the um, and Marcy, hold on to share out. Let's just share out both your screens. Oh, are you sharing? Yeah, there you go. Okay. So there's Marcy's screen. This is the view for people whose department is sales. And oh, can you return to the previous screen, Marcy? Thank you. Yeah, so this is the first form. Uh, this is the view for people whose department is sales. Now, um, so this is the first option we're showing you, switching views. Pretty straightforward. Um, the second option is um, is more um, fine-grained. We're going to control individual controls, right? So this is the second form. Marcy, switch to your second form. So the second form is actually, oh, it's the only, actually only has one view, and it has this text box. And Marcy is able to type into this text box because she's a member of the sales department. Great. Thank you, Marcy. I'm going to grab control from you again. So we're going to switch to that second form. I'm going to show you that when I open that form, I can't type into that. 
I'm trying to type and I can't type into that text box. It's disabled. Um, and I can show you the form for that. And it's basically the same setup, right? We have we have a data connection that calls get my info on load. And then we have form load rules. The first one is going to get the department for that user. And then instead of having a rule to switch views, we just have conditional formatting on the text box. So we're saying if the department is not equal to sales, then disable this control. I could change this to hide this control. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to republish it out. And I'm going to show you that the text box disappeared in my screen. And that illustrates two of the techniques that we showed in the previous slide where we talked about, you know, actions, formatting. We talked about the views. We talked about the buttons. So you can really control um, in a very fine-grained way what your form does and what your form shows to users depending on, on, on this case, the department. And if you had a different Active Directory key that you wanted to use, then uh, you can base your logic off of that. So let's wait for this to finish publishing. Okay. And I'll come back here and I'll click that document again. And the text, check text box is now gone. Can't use it. Um, you know, how can you extend this? Um, if you want it to be, if you want it to really um, create a clean view, you could use sections, for example. Sections are a great option because what you saw here in my screen is that I still see this text because InfoPath only hit the, um, the actual control and not the text. So it's really easy. You just add a section add the entire thing inside the section. And then instead of having the, um, the conditional formatting on your text box, you have your conditional formatting on your section. And that's going to hide the entire thing from me. So I'm just trying to illustrate a lot of the flexibility you get with this. Um, you can control individual uh, things like text, box, uh, text boxes and, and, uh, and uh, date pickers and all of that. You can control entire sections in a view. You can switch views. So it really gives you a lot of flexibility in what you want to do um, for your forms. So one of the questions might be, how do I do this without the Active Directory web service? The, um, the tutorial from MSDN is probably the best place to start. And the reason is um, they're going to show you in a, very, in a very straightforward way. You go to add data connections. And instead of adding a data connection to the AD user info, you're going to be adding just a, uh, an XML file, just an XML document. And that XML document is going to have your list of users, your groups, it's going to have all of that in there. And you're going to be able to base your logic from right within your form. You're not connecting to a web service. You're not connecting to anything external. You're just connecting to that XML file. So that, uh, that link from MSTN is a good um, resource to get a, an idea on how to do this without a uh, web service. So here's the view now. I don't, the section hit the entire thing. <clears throat> so let me. Let's see, how do I switch back to the slides? There we go. Um, so that was the demo. As I mentioned, we have, um, we have these two sample forms that I showed you. And uh, we have a document that walks you through setting those up. So um, if you send uh, email to course manager at qdabber.com, um, we'll send you uh, that material so you can take a look. And we'll send you the slides as well, because the slides have those uh, links that we showed in the first slide to the um, tutorials from Microsoft and from Clayton Cobb. And uh, Marcy, do you want to talk to this? 
Sure, I just wanted to remind everybody that we do have some upcoming training classes. Uh, the first one is actually a quick start. It's a 30-minute uh, course that's um, five days, and that's going to be in uh, April 9th through the 13th. And then our next training is an in-person training in Kirkland, Washington, and that is our InfoPath Master Training. You can get more information on our website or send an email to course manager at qdabber.com. All right, thanks. And let's go to the questions here. Um, please expand on how you get the Active Directory properties setting value key. Okay. Um, what is the MSDN link? Oh, um, it's one of these. Uh, let's, let's just show that slide so you guys can, can see. There's the link right here. Um, so let's get into why the um, how we get the Active Directory uh, properties. To do that, I'm going to share the um, I'm going to share the form again. And I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to show you the raw uh, results that are returned by the Active Directory web service, and that might. Um, oh, did I stop sharing? There you go. Um, so these right here, this is the raw result that we're getting back from the Active Directory web service, and. You can see that there's a lot of keys. Each key has its value. Okay. So how do we get that back? Um, and to illustrate that, maybe it's easier to just add another text box. And we'll add a rule uh, on load. And let's get the let's get the zip code. How about the zip code? And um, we're going to set that new field that we just added. So we're going to go to insert field or group, and we're going to switch to that secondary data connection, and we're going to select value. Because what we want is the value, but we don't want all the values. So we want to filter the data um, by using a key. So we only want the value for the key that is, um, well, I set zip code, and I can't remember what the, I think it's like that. Well, let's do mail. <laughs> Because I know what mail is. So that's going to give me my email here in this text box. There we go. So you just have to you just have to know the key. So if you want, oh, so it's postal code. So if I had used postal code, I get the zip. If I get, if I use, um, I think there's one for manager here. Manager I could use that. Um, I could use, where's my alias? Here it is, SAM account name. So you can really get into any one of these, um, so any one of these keys. And um, department is not defined for me. So this is an important thing. Uh, department is defined in Marcy's profile, but Mar department isn't defined on mine. So we can't really, um, we have to be careful about Having form logic based on department, we have to make sure that it's a key that's defined for all our users. Let me switch to that slide in case people are getting that link. And let's go back to the Q&A. OK, so that's answered. That was answered. Though this feature controls what views are shown based on some active directory properties, it's true that a non-sales user could still view the submitted sales content by viewing the XML file of the form accessible by loading the XML location path from the URL. <coughs> right. We're not saying that this is going to be a, a, a security solution for sensitive data. Um, we're assuming that your users are going to be viewing the forms in the browser. Um, if you have a user who's ambitious and who wants to download the XML, yes, by all means, they can they can download that XML and they can open it in uh, in a local program and view the contents. Of course, um, if you want it to really protect um, data, you're going to have the, the easiest. Well, the easiest thing Microsoft will tell you is to control um, SharePoint library permissions, of course. So you have to control your list permissions. You have to control your library permissions. But if you want to get really um, fine-grained control, then 
what I've seen in the past is encryption. So let's say there's a, a specific field that you don't want users to see. Well, you encrypt that field. So the, the XML file is not going to have um, readable text. It's going to have encrypted text. Um, so even if somebody who is malicious downloads the XML, you know, opens it in Notepad, they're not going to see the content. They're going to see just encrypted text. But that's really getting into some deep um, security there. Um, let's see. So any other questions? We have about four minutes left. Okay, I will assume that the questions have been addressed. Um, like we said earlier, we have um, the course manager. Oh, here it is. Course manager at qdaber.com email. You can, if you have feedback about the webinar, you can send that, send it there. If you have ideas for future webinars, you can also send them to that email address. Um, if we have your email on record as having attended this webinar, as having participated, we'll send you um, the forms that we talked about. We'll send you the, the document that has all the step-by-step -step, uh, information. And, um, and then if you think of any other questions later, um, send them along and we'll try to get those answered. Thanks for attending uh, our webinar and we hope to see you next week. Same time, same place. <laughs>